The Heritage Edition Bronco celebrates the Bronco's legacy with styling cues directly from the 1966 original Bronco with its white roof, the two-tone paint, the Bronco scripting, and the Heritage white grille. This is made to stand out by looking backwards rather than looking forwards, and I like it. Let's dive into the review. All right, let's quickly talk about the trims offered here. We're basing this on the 2023 as this is a 2023. The 2024 models are out, obviously, but we're gonna stick to the 2023 lineup. And the trims include a base model, which yes, that's the name of it, base model. You have a big bend model, a black diamond model, an outer banks model, a badlands, a wild track, a raptor, and then the heritage and heritage limited are the top of the line trims. Now, most of those are all offered in both two door and four door with exception to a few, including that Raptor. I have driven and reviewed the Raptor for the 2022 year. Super fun. Go check out that video if you're interested. I also drove and reviewed the Everglades, which was a 2022 exclusive trim. That video is also out there and available if you wanna check it out. And that one is also only available in four door. So this is actually the first time I'm driving a two door Bronco. So that's cool. This one also has the Sasquatch package, which has several turnkey off-road features from large 35 inch tires and electric locking front and rear axles to the 7.4 final drive ratio with Bilstein position sensitive dampers and fender flares. So the full call out on this is the 2023 Bronco two door heritage with the Sasquatch package. Let's continue on taking a look at this vehicle starting with the exterior. So the biggest thing to note here on the exterior design here is what we kind of already touched on that the heritage package gives you, which is the two-tone paint style, the white roof, the white front grille, that signature Bronco logo. We also have these really great 17 inch Oxford white wheels. And like I said, those are wrapped in 35 inch tires thanks to that Sasquatch package. You can see the signature LED headlights for this Bronco. Those nice circular LEDs with the daytime running lights. Definitely looks really good. You can see those larger fender flares, the side step to help you get up into the truck. Around the back, we do have a full spare tire with that same white wheel. Obviously the Bronco logo, the Ford logo, and back here on the corner, you can see that Sasquatch logo. And we'll open up the back and show you the cargo volume and stuff like that, but first, Let's talk about the dimensions of this two door versus the four door. And if you assumed that the two door is shorter than the four door, that would be a good assumption. The full wheelbase for the two door is 100.4 inches, which is shorter than a lot of coupes on the market today. The four door has 116.1 inch wheelbase. So the full length here on the two door is 173.7 inches, while the four door is 189.4 inches. Height here is 71.9 inches, while the four door is at 73 inches and width is actually exactly the same at 86.2 inches. Our ground clearance here for the two door has a base ground clearance of 8.4 inches. This one with the 35 inch tires has a ground clearance of 11.6 inches. And this is super similar to the four door with 8.3 inches at its base and 11.5 inches with the 35 inch tires. And of course the Raptor and Everglades have slightly different specs for the size as well, but we've covered that before. So let's go ahead and jump into the rear. So you do have the barn door hatch that opens up and the flap that opens up for the window there and you get 22.4 cubic feet of cargo volume back here which isn't a ton for its class but is plenty for pretty much most of what you want to do you can fold these seats down to get a little bit more cargo volume if you need it but of course this is a pretty compact vehicle being the two-door you have the plate back here that's accessory ready you have a 12 volt power plug back here you have the exposed frame bars through the interior which is really nice you can take off the panels and the doors just like any other bronco of course but obviously there's not a ton to show back here let's go ahead and pop the hood and check out the engine that powers this heritage
All right, so let's talk engine setup here. Now, both the Raptors that I drove had two different engines already, the Raptor and the Everglades. The Raptor had the big boy three liter EcoBoost. The Everglades had the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost. Both of those matched up to the 10 speed automatic transmission. This one is the more base engine. This is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. It's an inline four. This pushes 175 horsepower, 315 pound feet of torque and is matched up to a seven speed manual transmission. And I'll discuss my thoughts on this versus the other engines offered in the Bronco and driving it with the manual transmission as we jump in and drive it. It's also worth noting that this setup will tow up to 3,500 pounds, which is the same as um, all the other configurations of the Bronco except for the Raptor, which I think hits 4,000 or 4,500 pounds. But before we can drive it, we need to jump in and talk about the interior and some of the tech here. Then we'll get it out on the road. Let's keep going. All right, we're in the front seats, the driver's seat of the Bronco. I'm not gonna jump in the back seats, but they are decently big for the size of vehicle. The kids rode back there during the week, had no issues. It is only two seats, so you can't go three wide here, which kind of sucks, but uh, overall the experience has been really well, even with driving the family around, as long as it's not the whole family. Our interior trimming here, thanks to the Heritage package, has these blue plaid seats that are supposed to harken back to the uh, 60s when plaid was the rage, as Ford says. I don't mind them. I think they look really cool. I don't think they look great in contrast with the red paint of the Bronco that we're in. If we had a blue Bronco or a black Bronco, I think it would make more sense. The family, on the other hand, even my wife, didn't like them at all as far as aesthetics, but they are comfortable. Nonetheless, the front seats here are heated seats. They are both manually adjustable, so no power adjusting here. But moving away from the seats, you can see the rest of the interior with the black, and you got that exposed red from the outside body. The front dash is all white. I think it actually looks really cool. Reminds me sort of of a Star Wars vibe. You've got the Bronco in red, which I think looks really good. Grab handles, you can see red in there as well. And then on the AC vents, you've got red there. Overall, really cool aesthetic. I like it. Let's kick it on real quick and talk about the tech. It is still push button start. And we have our eight inch infotainment screen with Sync 4. So if you don't know, Sync is uh, Ford's infotainment system and it's a good system. You've got plenty of stuff you can dig into. It is uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible. It is Bluetooth compatible. You do have navigation, you have driver assist features, towing features, and your owner manual that you can dig into, and obviously all of your audio uh, features here. So it might not be the most packed with features of any of the displays, but there is a lot here, and it's really easy to reason about and touch. Of course, we do have physical buttons below here for the audio settings this button here is to turn off your auto start stop engine which is nice especially with the manual transmission which we'll get to in just a sec you've got your ac and heat controls here including those heated seats down further is a little bit of a cubby with your usb type a and usb type c charging ports then you have a dial here for your terrain select as you twist it you go into different modes and those modes are showing on your digital display here so you have a normal mode, an eco mode, a sport mode, slippery mode, mud ruts mode, and that automatically shifts you into four x four, and you have a sand mode. We'll throw it back into normal mode. And you can also see on the style, you have your selections for what you wanna drive in, as far as two wheel high, four wheel high, four wheel auto or four wheel low. You also have a hill descent control button here. Of course, that's not the only trick that this can do for off-roading. You also have an array of buttons above the screen, and this will lock your front diff, your rear diff, and then traction control off, and your hazard lights are right here. You also have six auxiliary switches here. 
and then again our manual shifter it is a seven speed shifter but as you can see it does go up to six so you've got a reverse and a c which i assume is a crawl mode but other than that it's a basic six speed pattern with reverse you got to pull up this push over and forward and that's going to pull up your reverse camera as well there's no 360 camera on this one just a reverse camera but the bronco is offered with 360. you can see we have a bronco design and engineering plate here another little cubby cup holders back behind your cup holders are your window switches i always forget where these things are same with the uh side mirror adjustment right here it is really easy to reach and adjust these things but i do always forget i'm either looking in the center of the dash where they are on the jeep or on the doors which of course are not there this one is included with the hard top you do have a sound deadening added to this hard top unfortunately one of the big gripes with the other broncos that i've driven is the wind noise and uh even with the sound deadening it's still pretty bad in here when you get on the highway normal driving on normal roads not really an issue but uh getting up on a highway highway speeds even with the sound deadening here it's better but it's still an issue hopefully ford will uh figure out a better way to mitigate that sound there are some kind of aftermarket things if you own one of these that you can do to mitigate that sound that uh other people on the internet have shown so if you're interested in this you should check out some of those videos our steering wheel is a nice big round steering wheel we got red stitching on the leather here you've got all the buttons that you would expect on the layout no paddle shifters which i'm completely fine with no flat bottom sporty look which i'm completely fine with you only have one stock that does some of your lighting functions and your windshield wipers and then back to our driver information display so our speedometer is an analog gauge and then you have this big array of uh, an lcd display that's going to show a lot more information there and that can be thumbed through to give you the info that you're needing at the moment and of course like we saw as you shift into different modes you do get some visual indication here on what you're doing but with that i think we covered pretty much everything in the interior that there was to cover I think it's time to get this thing out on the road and see what we think about the drive with the manual transmission with the base engine with the two-door platform let's get it all right let's get it out on the road put it into first gear yeah i gotta push in the clutch the electronic brake i didn't talk about is down here <laughs> pretty kind of a reach uh, you push it in to release the brake pull it back to set the brake if you've got it in gear and you uh, push on the gas, it will release the brake automatically. It's hard to trust the electronic brake. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it, but being a traditional handbrake kind of person, it's kind of hard to trust. I would rather have just a handbrake, but don't even know where it would necessarily have room here. So uh, we'll, we'll release the brake. Got it in first gear and uh, take off nice and smooth. Now I've had a lot of uh, background, a lot of time driving manual transmissions. I've owned several vehicles that were manual transmissions. Pretty much all of them sports cars. The only vehicle that I've driven that wasn't a sporty car or sedan uh, that was a manual transmission was probably a passenger van. <laughs> During my trip to El Salvador, we drove a passenger van that was a uh, small diesel with a five-speed manual transmission. Lots of fun and lots of stories from that. But besides that, uh, I've never been a huge fan of manual transmission trucks, even off-roaders. I understand the appeal. I get why they're a thing. I understand people that ask for them it's just never been something that i've cared for i always see the manual as kind of a sporty thing but in this thing it seems to make sense even with that smaller engine it easily gets up and goes you can easily put the power down uh, and driving it with a manual there's really no issues there 
The only issue comes in things like stop and go traffic, where you're constantly in first gear and uh, holding the clutch down, things like that. It can be kind of a pain in the butt and I did experience that during this week. All of the DFW area have horribly packed roads and there's just traffic everywhere. But uh, outside of having stop and go traffic, there's no issues driving the uh, six speed, getting up on the highway, putting it into the six gear. It drives just fine. You do get the wind noise that I've talked about and you can probably hear it even here going 45. But of course, this is an off-road vehicle, not a luxurious cruiser. But again, gets up and goes just fine. And that is in sport mode. Don't really feel much of a difference. I've basically driven it in uh, normal mode all week, which keeps it in too high, which has been just fine. Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to really take it off road and take advantage of that four wheel drive or four low. We haven't had any bad storms while I had this where I'm really taking advantage of that uh, four wheel drive with slippery roads. So I've just been treating it like a day-to-day -day driver and for the most part, it works fine. I wouldn't buy a manual transmission personally for a day-to-day -day driver. The wind noise for day-to-day -day is a bit more annoying, but the Bronco as a whole is a really fantastic vehicle. Driving position is really good. These seats are super comfortable. You've got nice amenities like heated seats, uh, all the tech is easy to adjust, easy to reach. Steering wheel options are really easy to uh, maneuver and figure out. So again, overall, it's a decent place to be. I would just say if you're not planning on doing some off-roading with this, it might not be the best choice for a day-to-day -day commuter. Just something to think about. Fuel economy-wise, you're looking at 20 miles per gallon city, 21 highway, 20 combined. Uh, we've been averaging 17.1 miles to the gallon. You might've saw as we've shown the gauge cluster here. 17 is probably indicative of what you're gonna get. We, have, we do let it idle more as we're doing some of the video stuff or taking pictures throughout the week, stuff like that. There are times where I push it just to feel the vehicle and play around that you probably wouldn't do if you own this at least not after the first week or so, but unless you're really trying to eke out that uh, eco-ness of it, the 17 MPG sounds pretty right. You probably get 18, maybe close to that 20, which that's kind of indicative of the EcoBoost engine. You really gotta drive them lightly to get that uh, stated eco number. But I have been really impressed with the power and just the drivability with this engine i was worried about it after driving the 2.7 i think that's a great engine in this vehicle also but this one does just fine and i think a lot of that does come down to having a manual transmission with it if it had a 10 speed auto it probably would feel a little more sluggish driving the two door over the four door you mostly don't realize it like i said the width is the same and it is a pretty wide vehicle. Unless you're parking it, you don't really feel the length. But once you do park in a parking spot and you pull all the way up, you'll, you do realize that uh, you've got a lot of room that you didn't expect, if that makes sense. It's definitely easy to maneuver around, even in the city. I had to parallel park it, had no issues. So a lot of what might entice you to one trim over another, is gonna be some of the looks, but probably mostly the price. Let's go ahead and uh, pull back over. Let's talk about the price of this, talk about the base, talk about uh, the other two Broncos that I've driven and what their price was. And then I'll give you some of my final thoughts and we'll start wrapping up the video. Let's get into it. All right, with that fun drive, let's quickly talk about the price of the Bronco, then we'll jump out and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. So the base Bronco starts at 34, 890 so basically $35,000. This is I guess basically the most base I've driven even though the uh, Heritage is kind of a premium trim. It's got the base engine, it's got cloth seats, it's missing some of the tech. We've got a manual transmission. I would go for a more base option with the Bronco. 
if I was buying one and then kind of kitted up as I would like on top of that. So I really do like this heritage that we're in here. Not that I'd necessarily go for a manual transmission. We'll talk more about that in just a sec. Uh, but this heritage that we're in here starts at $47,000 and you can add some options that easily pushes that up to around the $50,000 range. The Bronco Raptor we drove was $81,000 and the Everglades was $56,000. So 47 grand isn't terrible, but I definitely like to jump into a Bronco that's more around the 35 to $38,000 range and see what I think. I think that's where I would try to stick if I was jumping in one. But again, let me uh, jump out. I'll give you some of my final thoughts there and we'll wrap this video up. All right, so let's get into the business here. Let's get into the uh, weeds of my opinion on the Bronco, especially this two-door heritage Bronco. I love the styling. I love the size of it, especially if you're single or yet small kids or something like that. You don't have a large family that you need a large SUV for, or even like my situation where we have a uh, minivan that we can throw the kids and all the stuff in. But uh, if we're taking shorter trips or smaller trips with less people whatever having this as a second vehicle like i said i don't do a ton of off-roading unless it's an event there's not really anywhere near where i live that's good for off-roading so i wouldn't be looking at a bronco for off-roading purposes but if i were off-roading and looking for something the bronco would be top of mind especially this two-door with the manual transmission for day-to-day -day life <laughs> dropping the kids off to school sitting in stop and go traffic the manual transmission is a bit of an annoyance. I am a fan of manual transmissions, so let me preface this before you start hating me in the comments, uh, especially with sports cars, especially for purpose-built vehicles, but for day-to-day -day driving, uh, it is a pain, I'll admit that. And I never really understood the appeal of having a manual transmission in a truck or an SUV, but it wasn't bad. It was nice and fun to drive. And I definitely understand the use case for having it for off-roading. But again, if it was me buying a Bronco, I do like the two-door. I probably wouldn't go for the Heritage just because I don't want to pay that much money for it. And I probably would opt for a automatic transmission. Engine-wise, I think the engine had plenty of power for what we did for the full week, especially with this manual transmission. You get up and go with no issues. Again, the only gripe or negative thing that my family had to say about it was the uh, blue plaid seats on the inside, which I kind of like, but definitely don't match with this red exterior. But the family loved it and even had no issues with climbing in the back seats, which is always great. We even took this thing out shopping and filled the back and the back seats with a ton of stuff. So I guess the question is, would I recommend it to you? And yes, if it's something that you're looking for, I would definitely recommend it. If you always wanted a manual transmission, off-roading SUV, this one is a perfect spec. If not, there are plenty of others, but the Bronco, almost on purely looks, is always a thumbs up for me. But it also drives really well and definitely gets noticed, especially in this color scheme, pretty much everywhere you go. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button on the video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Bronco, the two-door Bronco, the Heritage Bronco. Let me know what your thoughts are on the manual transmission versus automatic transmission in a Bronco. If you're into automotive reviews, especially off-roaders or trucks or SUVs or family vehicles, Subscribe to the channel. We do a different review every week. You should also go check out TXGarage.com where we do a lot of written reviews as well as event news coverage over there from a lot of great authors, not just myself. Definitely worth checking out. But with that, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching.